so hi everyone i welcome you all to this 10th lecture that is on the continuation of mechanical properties of fluids so 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 far we have discussed about the statics part and i have started the fluid dynamics so in the last lecture i started a, a dynamics bit and tell you uh, about the equation of continuity so i have given one question related to the equation of continuity uh, let's solve that question first so the question is here uh, the piston is moving at the velocity of 25 meter per second and fluid is inside the container and as the piston move forward the fluid comes out through this nozzle and it goes there and it we need to find out the range okay and i think one thing is missing is what is the height of this so that is 1.25 meter so that was not given if you did it by assuming h then you can substitute it and then try to look at the answer but anyway i am giving a solution here so let's consider that area here here is a1 here is a2 velocity here is v1 here is v2 so applying so from by applying continuity equation we will be able to get the v2 so applying continuity equation between 1 and 2 so as i told you continuity means conservation of of mass so a1 v1 is equals to a2 v2 a1 is pi i am putting it in mm because uh, the this one is also in mm so 8 so that is the diameter of this the diameter here is 2 mm sorry not diameter it's a radius radius r1 this is r2 so pi into r1 square that is 8 square into v1 is 25 A two is two four into pi into V two, so we need to find to V two. So V two comes out to be so that is two square actually. So sixty four divided by four that is sixteen sixty zero point two twenty five meter per second is very high mass. There zero point two five zero point two five so sixty four. Into zero point two five divided by four. The so sixteen into twenty five is four, so it comes out to be four meter per second. So we get V two. Now the question is like, uh, it is the motion in a plane where you have a projectile motion of let's say consider this is a fluid element. so this is the projectile motion of a fluid element so here it is acting like this so it is at a height 1.25 meter from here so here in this direction velocity is ux in this direction velocity is ux in this direction velocity is uy and we know that v2 is nothing but ux v2 is nothing but so ux is nothing but v2 and we need to find out as it goes like this so what is the range so range will comes out to be ux from the projectile motion into delta t time taken to reach from this point to this point so we need to find out the time okay and we know that u y is zero there is no velocity in this direction so by applying the equation of motion s is equals to ut plus half at square plus so this is coming in this direction so s is 1.25 a is 10 and it is u y so that is zero so 1.25 Is equals to one by two into ten into t square, so it's become 
25 divided by 100 is equal to t square. So t comes out to be 5 by 10. And so range comes out to be 4 into 5 by 10. So that is 2 meter. So uh, let me repeat the question. So what is given in the question? So the radius at this end, that is 8 mm. So that is radius. Radius at this end is 2 mm, that is R2. Velocity is 0 0.25 meter. Per, velocity of piston is 0 0.25 meter per second. So as it moves along, so there is a, there is an increase in a fluid so there is a change in so whatever the fluid velocity is here it's different so uh, as it moves along the fluid velocity is increasing because because area is decreasing so due to that there is some different fluid velocity that is much higher than this and we need to find out as it moves as it falls down what is the range it covers uh, as a as it follows a projectile motion okay so now uh, let's discuss the Bernoulli's theorem or we can call it as conservation of energy. Okay. So if it is, uh, let's say this is or I can take. So there is a pi. So this end is at elevation of H1 and this end is at elevation of H2 and density of fluid inside is rho. Let's call this point to be 1, this point to be 2. Velocity of fluid flowing from this is V1, at this point is V1, at this end is V2. Pressure here is P1, pressure is V2, P2. So, what Wanderlis theorem says is the total, the total <coughs> according to According to Bernoulli's theorem, the total mechanical energy of the moving fluid comprising the gravitational potential energy of elevation. So for, if you take, see this case, elevation is H2 minus H1. So gravitational potential energy of elevation and the point to be taken is this one. Gravitational potential energy of elevation the energy associated with fluid pressure and the kinetic energy of the fluid motion remains constant. In mathematical form, we can write it like that. P1 plus half rho V1 square. This is, these are all the terms of energy in terms of energy per unit volume plus rho G H1 is equals to P2 plus half plus half rho V2 square plus rho G H2. Okay. So that's the concept of Bernoulli's theorem. And generalized Bernoulli's statement is P plus half rho V square plus rho G H is equals to constant. Okay. So that's the Bernoulli's principle. So Bernoulli's is a mathematician who derived this. Let me clarify that According to Bernoulli's, according to Bernoulli's 
principle as the speed of fluid as the speed of fluid increases the pressure within the fluid decreases okay so uh, you can uh, see this statement right away here so we know from the continuity equation v1 a1 is equals to v2 a2 so v1 divided by v2 is equals to a2 divided by a1 we know that a2 is greater than a1 implies that v1 greater than v2 which means to say that p1 is less than p2 okay <laughs> So as the as it moves as it moves along, so here the pressure is lower compared to this point. This is according to the Bernoulli's principle. Okay. Now we need to derive this Bernoulli's. I want to make aware that don't use. shortcuts in this derivation a book by professor s c verma has proved it well well with all the informations that includes all the relevant information needed to describe the physics okay so let's derive this but knowledge theorem so again we take this kind of h1 h2 consider a fluid element at t is equals to zero that covers this let's call this c D E F. So this is so blue one. This is at T is equals to zero. Now we are considering that fluid is continuously flowing from point A to point A B. Consider that fluid is continuously flowing from A to B. Our aim is to relate the change. In different form of energies as it flow from A to B. Okay. So this is at T is equals to zero. The fluid element is C D. Fluid, ele fluid element is C D E F. At some times T, the fluid elements displaced a bit, and this green one becomes at T is equals to sometimes T. So it becomes C prime D prime. E prime, F prime. Okay. So according to work energy theorem, work energy theorem, the 
work done by all the forces acting on a fluid element the work done by all the forces acting on the fluid element will be equal to the total change in kinetic energy of that fluid element okay so which kind of forces we can anticipate here that are forces due to pressure forces due to gravity that's it and then we have these the change in this forces or the work done by these forces will be converted into kinetic energy so let's find out forces due to pressure so that is so consider this fluid element and here area is so better to consider this h1 here and this fluid element h2 okay so the work done by the pressure forces are in this element is on this element is w c c prime plus w d d prime so w c c prime is p1 into a1 a1 is the area of this fluid element a1 here it is a2 a1 into so that is force into displacement the displacement velocity here is v1 the displacement here is v1 into delta t plus so now force is in this direction is positive in this direction is acting like this that is negative because it is resisting so the the force is here due to the pressure resisting the, this motion that is because of the inertia so that is minus v1 into a2 into v2 into delta t and what we found here is p1 a1 v1 delta t minus p2 a2 v2 delta t let's find out the mass of this fluid element so mass of fluid element c c prime must be equals to the mass of d d prime so that is conservation of mass so whatever mass goes from here to here will goes from d to d prime that is conservation of mass and that is density is same we need volume so volume of this fluid element is a1 v1 delta t of this fluid element is rho a2 v2 delta t okay let's call it as mass of fluid this fluid element so that is this mass is transmitted from here to here we can also call this a delta m or you may call it a delta m so from here what we get is so replace this here so a1 v1 delta t is delta m by rho is equals to a2 v2 delta t is equals to delta m by rho so replace it in this equation and work done by the by the pressure force comes out to be p1 into delta m by rho minus p2 into delta m by rho is equals to p1 minus p2 delta m by rho 
so that is the work done due to the pressure forces now we need to find work done due to gravity work done due to gravity so according to so that is nothing but the change in potential energy so that is minus e delta u so work done by the gravity is minus u f minus u initial so that comes out to be u c d e u final is c prime d prime e prime f prime u i minus u f and u initial is c d e f u c d e f minus u c prime d prime e prime f prime okay so u is so you can split it into these elements so u c c prime plus u c prime d minus u c prime d minus u d t prime so that comes out to be u c c prime minus u d d prime and that is nothing but the mass of this element and that is same delta m g h1 minus delta m g h2 considering these elements are not very big these elements are near the end and in fact is similarly small okay so delta m g h1 minus h2 is our work done by the gravity so that is equation 1 that is equation 2 and according to work energy theorem what we get is w net should be equals to delta kinetic energy so w net is wf plus wg is equals to k final minus k initial so wf is from equation 1 substituting from equation 1 and 2 One and two, p one minus p two into delta m by rho plus delta m g h one minus h two is equals to k final is half m v two square. The final one is this one. So half delta m v two square minus half delta m v one square and P one plus P one plus G H one plus half V one square into delta M by rho is equals to is equals to P two plus rho G H two. Plus half v two square. So here rho will also rho. Okay. So what we get is p one plus rho g h one plus half rho v one square is equals to p two plus rho g h two plus half rho v two square. And in general, it is p plus rho g h plus half rho v square is equal to cos. So that we have proved this, but now let's do. Okay, understood. So this is Bernoulli's theorem. Now let's look at the 
एप्लीकेशन ऑफ बंडोलिस थ्योरम एप्लीकेशन ऑफ बंडोलिस थ्योरम सो दैट इज वेंचुरी मीटर सो वॉट हैपन्स इज वेंचुरी मीटर सो बेसिकली वेन वी हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ सिस्टम area of the cross section is area of cross section this cross section is even area of this cross section is area of this cross section is a2 velocity of fluid is here is v1 here is v2 pressure is p1 pressure is p2 and fluid is flowing here Fluid is flowing in this direction, and there is a level of rise in this fluid, and in this fluid, there is a difference in the height here and here. H. Okay. So basically, venturi meter is nothing but a flow meter. that is flow measuring device measuring device works on the principle of works on the principle of bernoulli's theorem it has several application that is widely used in oil and gas industry to measure the the flow rate so what happen is uh, when so there is a uh, let's say you have this pipe so fluid is flowing let's say through this blue pipe and in between this blue pipe we have applied this venturi meter to measure the flow velocity to measure the fluid velocity inside this blue pipe inside this pink pipe so here fluid velocity inside the fluid velocity of the fluid flowing through pink pipe is measured by putting venturi meter in between that okay and so there is a rise in the uh, there is a rise in the height of this uh, tube that is capillary tube so these are capillary tubes this is capillary tube where fluid is flowing and due to this height we will be able to calculate the fluid velocity so let's apply bernoulli's theorem in between and 1 and and 2 so that is p1 plus half rho v1 square is equals to p2 Plus half rho v two square. Okay. So p one minus p two comes out to be half rho v two square minus v one square. And this p one minus p two, and there is no. So I have not taken rho g h because rho g h is same on both the side. Rho g h one. If you take rho g h two also, but h one. Is equals to h two. So this and this height is same. H one and h two. H one is equals to h two. Okay. So that's why this will cancel out, and what we get is this. Now, fluid velocity. So here a one is greater than a two. Means to say that. V one is less than V two. Means to say that P one is greater than P two. 
as P1 is greater than P2, so rise in the meniscus of this capillary tube is higher compared to this. And there is a difference in between two. So if you calculate from this point, height from this point to this point and found, so the difference is just this H. And that's why P1 minus P2 is nothing but it will become rho g h. Don't get confused with this rho g h and this rho g h. This is due to this, and this rho g h is coming because of the because of the difference in the height of the capillary tubes. That is because of the difference in the height of the capillary tube at point 1 and 2 and that is from the concepts of fluid statics so that rho g h is equals to half rho v2 square minus v1 square so this is first equation we know second equation is conservation of mass mass or the continuity equation so a1 v1 must be equals to a2 v2 so we need v2 if you want to calculate v2 so v1 is a2 v2 by a1 so rho g h is equals to half rho v1 a2 square by a1 square minus 1 sorry v2 so that is v2 square minus this so it becomes 1 minus a2 by a1 square into v2 square and what we get v2 is 2 2g h divided by 1 minus a2 by a1 square under root. Similarly, v1 is under root of 2g h divided by a1 by a2 square minus 1. From that difference in height and knowing the area of the venturi meter that should be given, you can calculate the velocity at both velocity of fluid. So what we want is our outcome is velocity of this cross section, not this so not this cross section. Velocity of this cross section. We we are essentially want velocity of this cross section because we know we want a velocity of this pipe and that that is of this cross section. So we want this as our okay and rate of flow flow rate can be let's say a1 v1 is equals to a2 v2 so a1 under root of 2 g h so if you take a2 out this become a2 divided by a1 square minus a2 square okay that is q so I will end this with this lecture and tomorrow I will discuss some other examples where Bernoulli's theorem is useful. Okay. Thank you.